and local government. Most of you know that uh, last year was uh, a transformative time for the city of Austin uh, with uh, our governance uh, transforming from uh, a at-large uh, governmental um, makeup to district-based, going from 7 to 11. And I think what that means, more importantly, I think, is the newness of what that means is, uh, in addition to having district-based uh, representation, for the first time in Austin's history, we have a majority uh, female council. How about that for the ladies? All right. Um, and uh, interestingly, I had an opportunity to hear uh, Jonathan do this presentation. I said, man, that's interesting. There are some similarities. Although they're a smaller city, uh, a, larger, a, l a large amount of the issues are the same. So uh, um, due to the fact that I have a, had an opportunity to serve on a board with Jonathan, I said, we really need to get you to Austin, and he agreed to be here. So I'm very happy uh, that he and uh, Maya are here, and I look forward to all of you being engaged and asking questions related to what that means in the, in the context of your day-to-day -day work and how you engage uh, from the departmental level uh, and understanding the nuances in, in dealing with uh, women uh, in governance. So at, that, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and introduce um, Jonathan. I keep telling the best job in, in America <coughs> is my position. He probably had an opportunity to be here, but he made the wrong decision, so it, it is what it is. Uh, Jonathan was appointed the city manager for the city of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida in 2011. Uh, as city manager of Lauderdale Lakes, Mr. Allen oversees the city's daily operations and for workforce, manages the city's annual budget, and implements the policy directives of the mayor and the city commission. Prior to being appointed to the city manager position, um, Mr. Allen served as assistant city manager and interim parks and recreation director, public works director, public works operational manager within the city of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. Over the past three years, uh, Mr. Allen has provided leadership in developing and implementing the city's successful financial recovery and sustainability plan and attracting economic development to the city and CRA areas, addressing the city's outstanding debt with Broward Sheriff's Office and enhancing the city's overall financial condition. Most recently, the city opened a Dollar Tree store and started construction on a new racetrack convenience store and gas station on State Road 70. Uh, before joining the city of Lauderdale Lakes, uh, Mr. Allen held senior management positions in both the city of Tamarack, Florida, and the city of Lawrence, Kansas. He has extensive experience in following areas of local government, city management, finance and budget, police, fire services, and public works. Um, he has also served uh, for the city of Lenexa, Can Kansas. I don't know where that is, man. In Kansas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A native of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Mr. Allen earned a bachelor's degree in economics uh, from Florida A&M University and a master's degree in public administration from the University of Kansas, which most of you who uh, know about public administration is the number one ranked uh, master's public administration program in the entire country. He is uh, a graduate of two nationally recognized executive leadership. So that's the paper introduction. Uh, Jonathan is indeed a friend. He's a man with high integrity. He's a, he's a person who really uh, cherishes uh, family, but more importantly, he cherishes the importance of uh, developing our young and emerging leaders. Uh, he understands the importance of our profession, which is one of the unique um, uh, uh, professions that touches the day-to-day -day lives of people, so I'm very happy that he agreed to be here. Joining him today would be Dr. Maya Burt Stewart. Maya, Maya is a military war veteran and founding member of MD Stewart and Associates Inc., a business development, public relations, marketing, and lobbying firm, firm uh, with offices in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, as a business development consultant, Dr. Burt Stewart's expertise is in helping entrepreneurs, startups, small and mid sized companies grow through executive coaching training, market expansion, product diversification, infrastructure uh, stabilization, strategic partnership. With expertise in understanding both domestic and international markets and research in the areas of corporate calamities, uh, revenue generation, market evaluation, and public-private partnership, 
Maya is able to design development solutions for companies seeking to add value, enhance their business model. Uh, Maya has been recognized at both national and state levels under the Obama administration. Uh, she has been tapped by former Secretary of Treasury uh, Timothy Geithner to serve as a panel member on the National Taxpayer Advocacy Panel, charged with working with the IRS uh, on priority topics such as wage, investments, and small business and self-employment operations. Her academic uh, accomplishments entail holding a master's degree in, public, uh, in business administration with extensive studies in global management and a doctorate uh, from the, uh, with emphasis in international business. So if you would, City of Austin, uh, please join me in welcoming these two dynamic folks. And I also would like to say, I wanna thank all of the affinity groups because this is a partnership and we wanted to make sure we bring uh, individuals with, uh, that, that are creative and innovative in their thought to share information with you. So uh, with all of our presidents, if they are here, please stand and be recognized. Uh, let's give them a hand. So without any further ado, you'll see me tipping out. Uh, our boss uh, told us we need to roll our sleeves up. We have work to do, so we have an executive team meeting at nine o'clock, but I wanted to kick us off and Good luck, and I hope you guys engage yourself in the presentation. Bye-bye. Good morning. I want to thank Mr. Snipes for that um, introduction. It didn't take much for me to come to Austin, Texas. But 20 years ago, well, let me say, um, on behalf of um, Dr. Maya Burke Stewart and I, we are deliciously proud to be here. And I want to tell you all that we brought the good weather here from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So you have to thank us for that. 20 years ago, I was at the University of Kansas getting my master's in public administration. And in that particular environment, I mean, that is, during that time, we were the number one graduate school if you wanted to become a city manager. So 20 years ago, I actually had the opportunity to do my full-time internship at the city of Austin. So when Anthony Snipes tells you that I made the wrong career decision, He's talking about the fact that I did not accept that position as a budget analyst 20 years ago. But one of my classmates, in which we had our um, part-time internship, she did accept the position, and she did extremely well. And as I'm the city manager in Lauderdale Lakes, Florida, she is the county assistant county administrator in Kansas, and her name is Penny Postoke. So I wanted to acknowledge that the University of Kansas did deposit into the great city of Austin, Texas. I have a great opportunity to talk to you about trends that have occurred over what um, I would say my 20 year career. When I was sitting in the audience at University of Kansas, we were taught how to be great public administrators, whether it was an assistant city manager, assistant to, or if we were fortunate enough to make it to the city manager role. And we were predominantly taught how to govern in an environment that at that particular time was predominantly male. And it, there was not a lot of diversity within these organizations over a period of time, it has absolutely changed. So although we will talk about the changing dynamics in governance, women leading in local government, it very well can be a more diverse conversation of how you have different populations coming into government roles, which change changes the way we have to interact with the governing bodies, with the advisory boards as they come to leadership positions. So when you talk about that, I think that we're in a trend now where you see a lot of activists coming to government. And when you have activists coming to government, nothing wrong about it, but a lot of them don't have a lot of experience as they move up through the process. They were the highest vote getter, I mean, <clears throat> and the next day, they're in the leadership seat, and you have to interact with them. And in interacting with them, you may have to change your management and communication style in doing so. So we're going to talk to you about the Lauderdale Lakes experience. 
women leadership in the public sector, in some cases in the private sector, the South Florida leading women, the city manager response, how I had to respond to that. And uh, we're going to have Dr. <coughs> Maya Burke Stewart come in and talk about women from Mars or in women, I mean, um, men from Mars and women for Venus. And then we're going to talk about do men and women speak the same language? And I'm going to tell you up front, no. And productivity in women-dominated environments, emotional intelligence, effective communication, barriers to communication, the different communication styles, managing communication and conflict and sexes, and to give you some takeaways that you can be more effective in your environments. And then we're going to have question and answer period. You know, my 11 year old daughter taught me a great lesson in communication. I was taking her to volleyball a, a few weeks ago and within a half of mile radius she asked me 10 questions. One after another. Dad, so do each of those houses over there have a pool? No, Janaya. Do they have a community pool? No. Are all of those houses over there worth a million dollars? No, I don't think so. If they're not worth a million dollars, how much do you think that they are worth? I don't know. Who pays their taxes? Do they have a mortgage? If you have a mortgage, who pays the mortgage? Do they have utilities, Dad? So in a matter of 15 seconds, I got 10 questions that I had to patiently respond to. And then I said, aha, that's how I have to deal with the commission. Now, I was up in University of Kansas, and I was taught if you put it in the agenda packet, you know, they should read it. And if they should read it, they ought not be asking me questions about stuff that is already in the agenda packet. So when they say, Mr. City Manager, could you tell me how much that capital improvement project cost? My sarcastic response would be, Madam Commissioner, if you look at paragraph four, you would be able to find that information. But my daughter taught me the importance of being patient and communicating with individuals, even when they already know the answer to the question. She made me a more effective communicator, although she is only 11 years old. An aha moment for me. In the city of Lauderdale Lakes, when I first arrived there more than 15 years ago, we had probably a predominantly male commission. And then we had an election cycle where we had one um, prominent woman get elected to the commission for the first time. And so that was our first female elected official of a seven member body in which the mayor doesn't vote only in the case of a tie. And then you fast forward to 2008 when across the nation and especially in Florida, we were going through economic downturn, property values decrease, decreasing at a significant um, rate. The governor at that particular time is implementing property tax reform and so our overall revenue stream decreases even further. And then you have this trend in the 2008 election cycle where we have a majority of our commission transitions to women elected officials. Three individuals elected to the commission. You still have a, I mean, a few males to participate in the overall dialogue of public policy decision and budget development and implementation. And then you have the, what I would call the early recognition of the dynamics. You can still present information the way it was taught at the University of Kansas, but you had to make sure that you were at least sensitive to know how to get certain things through. And then you come to 2012 election cycle where we go to a super majority. The mayor is still a male, but we have a super majority of our commission comprised of women. Then we have a special election where we choose to reduce the overall size of the commission over a two election cycle. So we're going to go from seven governing body members to five governing body members, giving the mayor official rights to vote on every issue. And during the most recent election in 2014, we go to a all female commission with a mayor for the first time having to deal with all female 
commissioners and with a city manager for the first time having to deal with all female commissioners. And so this is the part where I have to say that the expectation doesn't change. And I say that because my wife told me, don't be going down there telling folks that, you know, just because you got an all-female commission, you got to deal with all these emotions because you're going to offend me. So if any of y'all see her, let her know I put that in this presentation right here. <laughs> that the overall performance or expectations between a male elected official or public administrator, public administrator and a female public administrator, that excellence, professional excellence, expectation, it does not change. But the dynamics of how you interact with that individual certainly does change. And so the first thing that I did is I called Dr. Stewart and said, look, you got to come meet with me. I got to have an executive session on how I interact with an all-woman commission because things are about to change. And so first thing that I did was recognize the need to change. And then I had to do the same thing for the mayor. Because sometimes we may do things and we may say things and you may overlook a certain person as you're calling the vote. And if you're calling the same person on the same time to vote the first time, the other elected officials become sensitive to that. So we had to make perfectly clear, me talking to him, Dr. Maya Burke Stewart talking to us that we have to change our leadership model because going from a super majority to all female dominated commission is totally different. Another thing that you have to deal with is the fact that many individuals when they're coming into the, to the positions, it may be the first time that they're holding certain leadership positions. And it's a totally difference than having the title of vice mayor, deputy vice mayor, and executing the responsibilities of that position for the first time. It may be totally different of being the chair of the community redevelopment agency or the vice chair of the community redevelopment agency, and you are the chief executive for the first time executing budget decisions and management decisions, how do you interact with that if you are a public administrator? You have to know that you're training them and you're being trained at the same time. And if you use the, or attempt to use the same communication techniques and management techniques that you used or attempted to use in a predominantly male dominated environment, you will be making a serious error in your professional development because they don't process things at the same way. They don't process it at the same way. Can I give you an example? In our agenda cover page, we used to have the background information, we used to do the financial analysis and all of that, and we would put the business decision before them. And we, would, we hoped, in many cases in previous administration, they would make the decision, the cost bend analysis, this is in the best interest of the city, it's not gonna cost us that much money compared to not doing it, let's make that decision. What do you think the change, how, how did it occur when I went to a female dominated commission? Do you think that they were most concerned about the fiscal impact by the show of hands? Do you think that they were most concerned about non-fiscal impacts when making important decisions, the show of hands? It was the latter. So when I had a meeting with my elected officials, what is important, where normally I would have presented the financial argument, my elected official said, Mr. Manager, I don't wanna hear about the financial argument. I wanna hear about how this impacts the overall community, how it impacts the families, the youth and the children. So it may make good financial sense, but if I wanna get it through and get the necessary votes, I have to present it a totally different way because I could very well go present a financial argument of a racetrack which could bring over $6 million into a city and over $200,000 in one particular project, but they may make a totally different I mean, decision based on how close it was to those schools. And so you have to be sensitive to that as a public administrator. The overall trends of top political leaders, whether it's state, 
whether it's county, city, a school board, we have a transition where it is becoming more women dominated. Not just the city of Lauderdale Lakes, in the Broward County school system, which is the sixth largest school district within in the nation, the second largest school district in the state of Florida, they have a woman dominated school board. Chair, female, vice chair, female, all the members on the governing board are females. And the superintendent is a male. And he gets it just as much as I get it. In fact, I want to go to him and say, look, you need to talk to Dr. Bayer Burt Stewart because it is absolutely changed for him as well it is changed for us. I mean, this is the largest employer within Broward County experiencing the overall dynamic. In other elite roles, quasi-governmental agencies, whether it is the Urban League, which is Dr. Jermaine Baugh, which is the I mean, Children's Services Council, which is um, S Dr. Cindy Seltzer, which is the Supervisor of Elections, Sister Brenda Snipes, which is the Property Appraiser, Lori Parrish, the County Administrator, NFBPA member Bertha Henry. Do you see the transition? So you see women in leadership positions that as a city manager and you as a public administrator, you will have to interact with them in a different way than you would normally have interacted with a non-diverse leader in that position. And as a public administrator today and a public administrator tomorrow, you must be prepared for that because the trend will only change. And I submit to you that if Hillary Clinton runs, just runs for the office, you're going to see even greater numbers in leadership positions. If she wins, you're going to see even greater numbers starting at the bottom on top. Before I came here, I had the opportunity to look beyond, sometimes they say you have to look beyond the line. So I was looking above the line, how many elected officials that I have that were women, above the line. I looked below the line on advisory boards. And that is the input into commission because most of the times they've gone through a local government academy, they've served on a school advisory board, a beautification advisory board, a planning and zoning board, en route to getting to the top leadership position. But you see the dynamics, or at least I saw the dynamics below the line, that you see increasing membership on the advisory boards also, which is, which is good. So at your level, you need to start interacting with the individuals even at the advisory board level. It may not be today, but in years to come, those are gonna be the future leaders on the commission or the council that will be sitting up there. So it is important that you have those interactions early. I'll give you an example. I was public works director in the city of Lauderdale Lakes, and I had the opportunity to work with the chair. The chair was Barrington Russell didn't make any difference. I was just doing my job. I made him look good. He made me look good. Kept him out of my office. Lo and behold, five years later, who do you think became an elected official? The Barrington Russell that I dealt with as a advisory board member on the beautification advisory board, and I was the public works director. Fast forward eight years later, Barrington Russell who served on the advisory board, who served on the city commission, is now mayor. So if I would have had a bad interaction with him in the advisory board role, I literally could have had a negative experience with him in mayor. So you have to know that your interactions with individuals at the grassroots level could very well um, grow. This talks about women in public administration positions, but before that, I want to talk about a quote from um, Sheryl Sandberg, and it was a part of a, a TED talk that she gave in 2010. And we all know um, Sheryl is the chief operating officer for Facebook, 
and she gave a TED Talk, and the TED Talk was titled, Why We Have Too Few Women Leaders. And she was primarily talking about the private sector. And she, was, um, she observed that there were only a small number of women making it to what they called the executive suite. And during that particular talk, she challenged the women in the audience to do two things. It was to sit at the table, to make your partner a real partner, and don't leave before you leave. But in the public sector, as I indicated, although you would have a decreasing trend of women in the C-suites, in the public sector, you have a different trend. So in the public sector, in the private sector, you only have 4% of the women in the top executive positions. And only 3% hold the highly um, compensated executive positions. And the chief executive officer position, CEO, less than 1%. So as I gave you the trend of the growing numbers in the public sector, government, in the private sector, it is going in the opposite direction in many instances. So you have two dynamics, but this particular slide shows how women have penetrated certain positions in the public sector, whether it is in construction, manufacturing, financial activities, public administrations. So we have a large or percentage penetration rate in these industry areas than you would have leading toward the executive suite area. And that's something that should concern you too because that is a reverse dynamic. And if you reached a public administration leadership elite position, you may have to interact with the private, private sector individuals who may hold the role of chief executive officer, senior vice president, executive vice president. So your leadership trend has to reverse in dealing with those individuals. And you will experience that in your career as well. This shows the number of women mayors in Florida. Over 20 men, I mean women hold the position of mayor within the city, I mean within various cities in the state of Florida. This is the trend in Texas, over 10. So if you consider, if you continue the trend of leadership, you very well could see more women mayors in the cities that populate Texas, just as you can see the num increasing number of women mayors in the state of Florida. So that is a trend that's occurring. So if you choose to move to other areas in your career development, because during these days, many individuals don't stay with an organization 30 years, retire, and get the watch like our grandparents and our parents did. Individuals who are coming in the work sector today, they may have five or six employers before they retire. And then we're talking about the increasing <coughs> leadership in top positions and the changing leadership dynamic and understanding the pertinent conversations that you must have. So the executive session was very important for me. It was very important for the mayor, but another individual that I thought it might benefit, and it did, was that we had to bring our city attorney into the actual fold. Because sometimes you may have individuals who are very trusting of a legal opinion of an attorney, and they may not question it, question what he or she says. But in a different environment, you gotta show the statutes, where you got it from, how you, how you came to your legal interpretation, and you may get five or six questions in the new normal that in the old normal, the city attorney just said something and it was just accepted. So having our city attorney go through the leadership training helped him to understand that he was in a changing environment as well. And then we also had an executive one-on-one -on -one session with the mayor and commission before um, they actually came together as a body because it was important for me to get them to fully understand that they were operating a business. This is a municipal corporation and you have to make decisions just as you were a governing body or a corporate advisory board. I was the chief executive officer and they are the members looking at shareholder stake because you want your overall um, 
not just populations, but you want your economic uh, parameters and your um, measures, performance measures, to enhance while they're on the overall commission. And then it was important for the city staff 